As if there weren't enough changes for the tournament already, they may have to deal with uh, a little weather issue mm -hmm. later on in the tournament <laughs> as well, right? Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Nettie Rompport. Yeah, so glad it's at least clear right now so they can game on, which they're right. going to be doing here very soon. But let's check in with Evan because, yeah, there's a big storm just to the north of us. That's right, and it's just stalled over the central California coast. It's going to move down in our direction tonight into tomorrow. That's the timing on it. But ahead of that, today is actually going to be a pretty nice day. We wake up to 40 degree temperatures for the most part across the county 46 in Carlsbad and San Diego 41 in El Cajon and the sunshine beams through for a good portion of the day before those clouds start to increase in the afternoon. We start to set the stage for this next round of precipitation. Now we do have a flash flood watch that takes effect at 7 p.m. today. We'll walk you through what that means. We'll also take a look at the timing of this system to talk about when we see the most impactful precipitation come our way. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, it's going to be late tonight into tomorrow. But again, we'll time that out specifically in just a few minutes. Jenny, how are tra how's traffic looking? Well, first of all, good morning. Second of all, there's um, a place that I go, CHP, that lists, you know, up to the minute traffic incidents and I just checked the page and there's nothing there. It's literally just an empty page. So that's what you get traffic wise. Back to you. Good to know. All right, Jenny, thanks. New this morning, a homicide investigation is underway after a shooting in Encanto. This happened around 1030 last night at Varney Drive in Vado Way. Police tell us the victim is a man, but they haven't released any other information on a suspect. We'll bring you more information as soon as we get those details. We are seeing COVID restrictions loosen up around the county with the stay at home order lifted and some health officials are now worrying that this could lead to another spike in cases and they are concerned about one particular contagious variant of coronavirus. News 8's Teresa Sardina is live along Harbor Island to explain more on this as well as this new report from Scripps Research. It's pretty eye opening. Yes, good morning. And that new study finds that one out of three people infected with coronavirus will not have any symptoms. And health officials say this is a big concern because of the contagious strains that are becoming more prevalent. And in this research, the COVID variants include a strain originating in Brazil, which has now been confirmed in an American traveler returning home from there to Minnesota, as well as the South African strain, which has not yet been detected in the U.S. California California also has its own strain, Cal 20C. Research, researchers say now responsible for 40% of all infections in Southern California, but the COVID variant originating in the United Kingdom, also known as B117, believed it to be 50 to 70% more transmissible than the original strain, which is causing greater concern here in San Diego County. UCSD infectious disease researcher Natasha Martin warned that the UK variant with 87 confirmed cases countywide so far, is on track to become the dominant strain in San Diego in a matter of weeks, especially as restrictions are now beginning to loosen. There is some emerging data that the B117 is more lethal, so we could expect even more deaths than we're seeing now for every case. Natasha Martin also says as restrictions are lifting, you know, she was talking about the CDC report as well. Uh, the CDC is asking Americans to spend less time at grocery stores. Also wear double masks and keep practicing social distancing. I'll send it back to you. All right, Teresa, thanks. Let's take a closer look at the latest numbers in San Diego County. 1,415 new COVID-19 cases are being reported for a 9% positivity rate of about 16,000 tests. The number of local ICU beds in use has fallen to its lowest level since January 9th, and the number of COVID patients in the hospital is now the lowest it's been since Thanksgiving weekend. But 44 deaths were reported, marking 121 total deaths over the last four days. So sadly, that's part of the reason ICU space has opened up. The White House estimates 90,000 more Americans could die of COVID-19 over the next four weeks. The Biden administration's COVID response team issued the sobering warning during its first public briefing yesterday. January has been the deadliest month so far in the pandemic. CBS News has learned that FEMA has approached the Defense Department for service members to help staff up to 100 federal vaccination sites. 
A vaccine superstation is set to open up in North County. Starting Sunday, Cal State San Marcos will host a superstation that can vaccinate up to 5,000 people a day. So this may help alleviate that big line that you see at Petco Park. Appointments will become available every day right around noon. That's when you should log in and try to get your appointment. And the U.S. economy shrank by the largest amount in 74 years in 2020 by 3.5 percent. That's according to the Commerce Department. All of this, of course, because of the pandemic and new numbers coming in just now. 847,000 Americans filed for unemployment last week. Overall, nearly 4.8 million Americans are continuing to receive traditional state unemployment benefits. Well, many of the world's best golfers are in San Diego for the Farmers Insurance Open. So we've had, of course, bad weather at the beginning of the week. There's more to come. Then there's the pandemic. All of this having an impact on the tournament. Right. News 8's Chris Grow live at Torrey Pines ahead of the opening round this morning. And, you know, you're one of the lucky ones. The media can actually be there. We can, but as with anything that we're talking about during this pandemic, things are different, right? Normally, we'd be free to walk around the course right now, kind of previewing all the amenities and hospitality stuff, but with no fans, we're here uh, in these kind of makeshift pens here to make sure that we're all safe, especially like from the other crews, maintaining that social distancing, but uh, a lot of precautions being taken. It's not just uh, with no fans. The PGA Tour has their own COVID-19 precautions that are in place to keep these players safe, to keep the staff safe, to keep the TV crew safe, and they're all being followed right now. Uh, and as if golf isn't hard enough, especially at Torrey Pines, uh, this is different. Now, it's important to remember, golfers are creatures of habit. So when they come out to tournament after tournament at a specific location, they're oftentimes using, uh, in, especially in their yardage books, the, the books where they take copious notes, they're marking out grandstands. Okay, it's 150 yards. I'm going to use that grandstand as a sight line there. That's all gone now. So during these practice rounds, uh, they've been having to adjust. Now, there haven't been fans at a lot of the PJ Tour stops, especially just recently. Uh, so they're used to not having those at different courses. But now they're making an adjustment here to the farmers because we had fans at last year's farmers. But another change up here, uh, specifically with the tournament, uh, the Century Club, which hosts this tournament, which makes uh, uh, the that is the nonprofit, which helps raise a lot of money for charities. Uh, they're going through a lot of changes as well. And we actually spoke with uh, Marty Gorsuch, who's the CEO of the Century Club, the nonprofit that puts on uh, and hosts this Farmers Insurance Open. And look, they've been able to donate uh, over a million and a half dollars a year to local charities. But this year, it's been a lot different. Uh, our three main avenues are our kind of tickets and hospitality, sponsorship, and our pro-ams. And similarly, sponsorship without fans out here to see the advertising through our partners, that, that's limited as well. And look, a lot of things are different, but what's so awesome is that this is still happening, right? We still have a little bit of normalcy. Yes, we'll be watching uh, from home. You won't have those Bloody Marys out on an early Saturday morning here at the Farmers at Torrey Pines. Make the Bloody Marys at home and watch from the comfort of your couch. Eric and I mean, when yeah, you're off work, gonna, it's fine. It's going to be a little different <laughs> this year, that's for sure. But uh, if the rain should cause problems uh, tomorrow, uh, it has to be quite a bit, right, for them not to play. Yeah, you got to see pulling, and, and it sounds like what Evan was talking about, there's a pretty good chance of that. Like, <laughs> yeah. If the greens become unplayable, if they're not even able uh, to get a putt in because there's so much water there on the greens or in the fairways, they will put things on pause. Now, uh, it doesn't mean the tournament's going to be canceled. It just means that the rounds will be happening later, uh, either on in the day when the rain subsides or they'll push on to the next day. Sometimes they try to get two rounds in even uh -huh. during one day, which is something that we've seen before at other tours stops so uh, they'll be prepared uh, but of course as we're all hoping for uh, that the weather will just kind of shift away but I don't Ooh. think that's gonna happen I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure about that. thanks Chris <laughs> oh man they'll be out there with blow dryers right. desperately yeah. trying to soak it up Tarps. Chris, thank you <laughs> <laughs> right now I mean they are getting dumped on just to the north of us so the storm isn't that far away it's a powerful weather system making its way through central California at the moment heavy rain from this atmospheric river triggering mudslides in Monterey County winds caused trees to crash down on cars, knocked over power lines. You see all this video uh, from Northern California to basically Santa Barbara right now. Uh, they're seeing a lot of destruction from this. More than 5,000 people forced to evacuate the Santa Cruz Mountains. And then look at the Sierra Nevada Mountains. This was over by Truckee, it looks like. They got hit with this major snowstorm. Eight 
feet Ooh. of snow in the Tahoe area. But 12 inches of rain mm. for San Luis Obispo. I mean, that's in a, a remarkable amount. And Evan, I mean, we're watching this. It's so close, but yet not here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Yesterday we were like, is this really going to take another 24, 48 mm -hmm. hours to get to us? And the answer is so far, it seems like that is the case. I mean, uh, the view outside, this is beautiful. This is what we've got outside at Mount Woodson. It's the calm before the storm and in fact, the full moon before the storm. But you can see how those clouds are uh, kind of giving us some filtered sunlight or at least will once the sun comes up. Uh, we're not expecting any wet weather until we get to about 8 and 9 p.m. tonight. So the timing on it still pretty similar to where we were yesterday. It looks like LA County, Orange County. They're going to start to see those showers really shift in by this afternoon and then late tonight through early tomorrow morning. That's when the bulk of moisture comes our direction. So let's watch how this low pressure system moves right now again across the central California coast going into the next several hours. It shifts farther to the south and then it pushes off to the east of us and that's how it's going to clear out. After this storm system, we're going to be left with a pretty dry Saturday and Sunday. So when we're talking about uh, the farmers open, things are actually looking OK for Saturday and Sunday, both sunny days ahead. The problem on hand is that by Monday and Tuesday, we start to see this next low pressure system develop. That's going to bring us showers likely from Tuesday into Wednesday. So walking through our precipitation totals, you can see how all the way through 530 AM on Friday, we are well over an inch in Carlsbad and Del Mar. We're just over half an inch in San Diego and El Cajon and about three quarters of an inch down toward Chula Vista. The heaviest precipitation probably going to be taking place across the northern half of the county, but boy, this is going to be a wet one for sure.